Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionalis. This is video number 12 in our series about bleeding and coagulation disorders. In the previous two videos, we have talked about primary hemostasis. Today, let's talk about secondary hemostasis, also known as coagulation. So, let's get started. Here are the previous videos, so make sure to save this playlist. Hemostasis, hemo means blood, stasis means stable, is prevention of blood loss or stopping bleeding. Steps of hemostasis, vasoconstriction, temporary platelet blood, also known as primary hemostasis, thanks to platelets, coagulation, also known as secondary hemostasis, thanks to coagulation factors, fibrinolysis to dissolve the clot and restore the normal blood flow, then regenerate and repair the tissue. Primary hemostasis is balanced on the dynamic harmonious antagonism between the smooth endothelium, which wants blood flow, and thrombocytes, which favor clotting. Here is the scenario. Injury, vasoconstriction, temporary platelet plug, and depending on the type of trauma, if it's a very small platelet plug is sufficient, we're done. This is primary hemostasis. Thank you so much. If it's larger, we need secondary hemostasis, the coagulation to form fiber meshwork. The fiber meshwork will trap the red blood cells, then the clot contracts and serum is produced. Fibrinolysis to restore the blood flow and destroy this clot and then regeneration. First step is vasoconstriction, we have talked about it before, trauma, then the surrounding tissue will exert a back pressure, the muscles surrounding this injury will contract, forcing this vessel to constrict, the vasoconstriction itself is a local myogenic spasm, independent of any nerves, local uticoid factors and some nervous reflexes will help, but the process itself is myogenic, it's like the heart, it has automaticity, yes, the vagus can slow it down, the sympathetic fibers can speed it up, but the heart itself is autonomous, same concept. Vasoconstriction, we have some factors that are pro-constriction, so it's serotonin, thromboxane A2, epinephrine and fibrin peptide B. Like the police who checks the security gate that's safe and secure and the layer Underneath the gate is not exposed, everything is fine. And the engineer inspecting the building, the walls are not cracked, what's behind the wall is not exposed, everything is fine. When the stuff is cracked and the underneath layer, the subendothelial collagen, starts to be exposed, baby, we have a problem. In a quick review of primary hemostasis, here is normal intact endothelium, subendothelial collagen is not exposed. Then injury happens, the endothelium is damaged and injured, the SEC is exposed. Platelets will start to swell and form pseudopods so that they can adhere or roll over and adhere. Platelet adhesion, thanks to the GP1B and the von Willebrand factor, which is produced from the endothelium and the platelet. Then platelet activation, more swelling, they contract and release granules. How do they contract? They contract by the calcium canalicular system. A release granules such as ADP, von Willebrand factor, and then thromboxane A2. What are the functions of ADP? ADP helps express GP2B3A receptor and the conformational change activation. That thromboxane A2 helps with platelet aggregation, vasoconstriction, and bronchoconstriction. ADP expresses the receptor and also helps with platelet aggregation. Thromboxane E2 has more function, that's why it's a whistle plus. Platelet aggregation. We have a platelet and another platelet, thanks to the whistles. And then we have GP2B3A here, GP2B3 here on the other platelet. The fibrinogen molecules is in between. It will be converted into fibrin fibers. These fibrin fibers will help bridge the gap, and those two platelets will fuse together and with the fibrin fibers, now the red blood cells are coming to be trapped here, and we have a strong mesh work. What helps this is the coagulation cascade. What starts this pro-coagulation is the platelet factor 3, one of the platelet granules. Is it alpha or dense? Alpha. Then we have platelet fusion, thanks to the fibrinogen being converted into fibrin. The coagulation cascade is going on here, and coagulation cascade is called the secondary hemostasis. 
then the fibrin is formed from fibrinogen we have a strong meshwork trapping the ripple cells forming a strong plug the platelet plug is temporary the coagulation is relatively permanent the platelet plug is weak the coagulation is strong now brief history lesson about the coagulation cascade let's start with the father of medicine Hippocrates he said I see some fibers here in the blood vessel what are these I have no idea I'll just call them fibers then Galen comes in and call it thrombus but he didn't have a clue why does blood clot outside the body but not inside the vessel I don't know then comes William Hewson Eureka the blood can clot coagulation is king we have more understanding of the process of coagulation we call this dude the father of hematology then the 1880s we understood that we have procoagulants and anticoagulants we will call this thrombin and we call these anti-thrombin then Moravitz flood spiro hypothesis in 1910 what did Moravitz say the coagulation is nothing but fibrin fibers these fibers are formed from a precursor called fibrinogen thrombin converts this fibrinogen into strong fibrin fibers thrombin is formed from a precursor called prothrombin so fibrin is formed from a precursor called fibrinogen and thrombin is formed from a precursor called prothrombin what does ogen mean it will mean it means it will help genesis of fibrin fibrin ogen what does prothrombin mean pro here doesn't mean a professional it means pre before before thrombin because prothrombin is a precursor for thrombin so in the early 20th century this is all of coagulation no intrinsic or extrinsic nonsense this is it coagulation is nothing but fibrin fibers that trap the red blood cells fibrin is present in a precursor inactivated form called fibrinogen in order for this fibrinogen the inactive to become fibrin the active we need thrombin the protein of thrombosis but this thrombin is also present in a precursor inactivated form called the prothrombin so we have here the prothrombin being converted into thrombin and there is something here that's very complicated has many items and many members we'll call the thrombinase complex prothrombinase because ace means an enzyme and prothrombin because it will convert the prothrombin into something else something better after this Moravitz did a very important thing he died so since this is fibrin and fibrin is coagulation we cannot call it a factor so because it's, it's the entire goal when I say the goal is to be successful so success is the goal what are the factors that lead to success we have one two three factors that will lead to success we cannot say that success is a factor no success is the end result same thing here fibrin is not a coagulation factor fibrin is the end result what's before fibrin fibrinogen let's call it factor one boom what's before fibrinogen thrombin which comes from prothrombin let's call it factor two boom that's how we got the number because if you listen to your professor they start with factor 12 what the flip like from factor 12 to factor um like one and then after this factor 13 what but if you understand history you will know what you're talking about modern coagulation theory the nonsense the intrinsic and the extrinsic and all of this complicated stuff we added something before this and something after more of it and this is that's it what's before these two steps we have a cascade factors 3 to 12 there is no such thing as factor 6 we discover something we like suspected that it was an important part of coagulation and we called it factor six then we realized it has nothing to do with coagulation so we just dropped the number that's why we don't have any factor six but every other number from 1 to 13 has a coagulation factor it has a number which is a Roman numeral 
and it has a name. Okay, now you have told us what's before this, these two steps, the cascade. So what comes after it? Factor 13. We discovered it absolutely by chance because some patients had a problem. After going through all of this cascade and the extrinsic pathway and the intrinsic pathway, forming thrombin, converting fibrinogen into fibrin, these fibrin fibers are trapping the red blood cells. Then suddenly, out of the blue, these patients will bleed and die. What? After forming this strong, these strong fibrin fibers, that are trapping the red blood cells, forming the secondary strong coagulation fibrin plug, they will bleed and die. Yes, because this fibrin is unstable. Oh, what do you mean uh, unstable? Do you mean that there is something that should stabilize the fibrin? Yes, let's call it fibrin stabilizing factor. Okay, we need a name. Done. We need a number. Okay. Since we have discovered factor 12, let's give it the next number, factor 13. Check. We have a name, check, and a number, check. That's why we call it factor 13. What the flip does a cascade mean? A cascade literally means a small waterfall or a zigzag, okay? Or a series of reactions, zig, zig, zig. Falling or rushing forth, zig, zig, zig. A series of steps. This step is stronger than this one, and this one is stronger than this one. As it moves on, it gains th strength, it gains momentum, it gains gravity, it gains traction. This is called acceleration, the change in velocity over change in time, hashtag gravity. That's why the velocity of water here is greater than the velocity of water up here. Makes perfect sense. If you have studied biochemistry before, you know that everything in biochemistry is a cascade, a series of reactions. We start with glucose, then by glucokinase we have glucose 6-phosphate, then another reaction, another reaction, another reaction, until we're done with glycolysis. Why have a cascade in the first place? Because each step is stronger than the preceding one. Hashtag acceleration, hashtag momentum, hashtag traction. This allows time and more steps which allows for regulation. Instead of having just one step, let's say glucose here, and boom, ATP here. How would you regulate this? It's just one step. It will happen suddenly in just a fraction of a second. In one step, you cannot regulate it. But when you have one, two, three, four, five, six steps, if you want to regulate it, you can regulate it here, you can regulate it here, you can regulate it here. One of them will be stronger than the others, we call it the rate limiting step. This is different from all or none low. This is a cascade. Every step is stronger than the preceding one. That's why we have a coagulation cascade to make a strong fibrin. Every step is stronger than the preceding one. So we have step here. Factor 12, then factor 11, then factor 9, 8, 10, 5, boom, 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 fibrin. So here is the whole story. You injure yourself, then vasoconstriction, then platelet plug, also known as primary hemostasis, then the coagulation cascade. Boom, 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 Unless there is platelet activation, in vain there is blood coagulation. First we have to have platelet plug before we have coagulation. Without platelet activation, it's impossible to have blood coagulation. Take it to the bank. Some medicosis words of wisdom. There are only two ways to coagulate, but there are tens of ways to bleed. What does that mean? I'll tell you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. To get my bloody Dropbox links that contain all of my notes, go to patreon.com forward slash medicosis. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Subscription doesn't mean anything if you didn't hit the bell. Go to Facebook if you want some cases and Instagram for some notes. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. Medicosis Perfectionalis.